Well, welcome here, Barbara. Thank you. Jen's not here yet, but she's uh, probably struggling with the tech just like I was. <laughs> I, I'm awful with tech. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just how are you doing, Lyle? I'm doing pretty good. Well, it's been a, sad, been a sad day. We lost a couple icons today. Oh, yes. Yes. We have indeed. Yes, we have indeed. Howie Meeker. Can't yeah. believe he was 97, but. Yeah. Howie Meeker today. I, I, thought I, I grew up watching him. Oh, you did, eh? Lessons for kids, yep. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Peter Puck as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Peter. <laughs> Very true. But yeah, they're co both of them are icons in Canadian history, I think. Mm -hmm. yeah. For sure. I just, uh, I can't pronounce his last name, but Alex uh, called, called uh, a play on Hockey Night in Canada. I didn't know that until just a minute ago. I just. Uh, oh, really? Yeah, Alex Trebek? Yeah, yeah, he did. He did. Um, number so nine is in there. I think he's, he's famous. Bobby something, Paul or War or something. <laughs> so that was, uh, that's pretty cool. Who, who were number nine? Do, do you remember the? Gordy Howe. Gordy Howe. Okay, that's who it was. That's good. That's good. Number four, Bobby Orr. Okay. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, I'm a bit of a hockey buff. Oh, okay. I'm uh, I I'm part of the reason the Jets lot left Winnipeg. I I got into <laughs> hockey when they came back, so I wasn't watching when they were around the first time. Not not uh, not a good thing. So I apologize for that. It's all my fault. <laughs> We'll blame you personally. Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, and I've had to I've had to be hockey oriented because of you know, I've got a boy that had played hockey and so I was for thirteen years a hockey mom big oh, time. Okay. So a couple of boys that were in the game. Yep. Not at any big level, but just for fun. But sure. both obsessed. Big enough level that you've got a you know, four liter milk crate full of rocks. <laughs> Yeah, right. shape, yeah. <laughs> Gotta know it all. Yeah. Yeah. So what made you decide to start the um the quiz? It's a cool idea. Um combination of things. Um George Floyd and a podcast of someone who I used to know in Winnipeg. He's moved to moved to Toronto now. So, okay. Uh, yeah, and he was on a podcast, so I always check out his work. He's a musician. And he said um, something that really hit home. Um, everyone's got a place, to, a role to play in making things better. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know what their role is. And if you don't know um, how you fit in, uh, best place to start is just listening to stories. Yep. Listening, listening and learning, and then everything will fall into place. Everything will unfold. So, learning is everything. Yeah. So that's, uh, I wanted to create this space for people to do that. And, uh, found some, uh, found a, a free Yale course online. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's pretty good. So that's kind of what we're working through right now. Oh, that's cool. This is our fifth fifth one, though. So we're we're about a third of the way through the course. So we've gone through maybe 120 years worth of stuff. Wow. Yeah. So you've yeah. already been through Reconstruction. We have. Yep. Yeah. And they, yes, they fail you following it. Yes. Yes, we have. So uh, we, the last things we did were uh, World War One, and that was a, a pretty big shift in in attitudes. Um, a lot of African Americans went away to, uh, to fight for America, and they were welcomed back as heroes, and they were strung up and lynched because they were armed. And then that was kind of a, you know, enough of enough was enough kind of thing, and a big, big shift in uh, the Great Migration. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, um, big shift in attitudes, and then um, with the Great mi Migration brought about some urbanization, and that's what we're. Uh, talking about today the Harlem Renaissance which is very cool uh, something, something interesting I knew nothing about until uh, a couple of weeks ago when I did those lectures in the Yale course yeah I knew very little mm -hmm. about it um, so I'm, I'm eager to learn more I've kind of known about it in theory is about it 
Oh, okay, okay. Very broad strokes. So how, how it works, I don't, can you see the, the crowd, crowd per quiz in, in your window there? I actually have it up on my PC now, on my, yeah, okay. on my so, so I'm, the I'm, game I'm will I'm begin that early, yeah. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, so what uh, what will happen there on the website, though, Jen will ask some questions and it'll pop up. And um, uh, then you've got uh, five minutes to answer. So it's an okay. open book test, so you can go on the internet and open up another tab in your web browser and Google the answer and all that. Uh, so everybody gets to gets to get all the answers right, and everybody will, uh, you know, learn something while they're while they're googling, and you can share it with each other. Awesome. And uh, if you know the answer, you answer quick, and you get more points. So. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, I'm a history buff and a trivia buff, so this sounded oh, really perfect. okay. Oh, my bad. Jen is here. She's in the waiting room. I uh -oh. <laughs> You're not letting her in? Oh, we were having such a good chat. I didn't let her in at all. Shame on me. No, it's my fault. I distracted you. Oh, yeah. Mm. Okay. Yeah, you'd think it would pop up with a notification or something like that. Okay. Yeah, she's... she's Remember before I said she was working on the tech? No, not true. She was waiting for me, and now she's working on her tech. <laughs> oh, here we go. Sorry, Jen. <laughs> Sorry about the Hi, delay. Jen. I'm Barb. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. We can hear you. It's now. my fault. I was I was distracting Mike, and we were chatting. And then the you were in the waiting room, and I didn't even know I had to had to click to let you in. Good grief! <laughs> okay, how do I? Uh, I need to see. I joined browser wise because it's not letting me make a second window again. Oh no! <laughs> it's like every. It seems like every time there's a new, we're gonna get you. <laughs> Um, what is this? It's okay, you're ahead of me. I gotta, I'm still bringing up the quiz on my phone here. So, you got the link to the, to the quiz, right, Uncle Lyle? I sent it to, to you on Twitter this time. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. just waiting for it to open up once it gets started. Yeah, yeah. So, and, on my PC uh, and I'm using my phone to talk. Yeah, and I'm still trying to log in, Jen, so no rush. Okay. And I forgot my notes. Got my notes now. You got your notes, Jen? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Printed out. Yeah. There you go. No, no printer problems this time. <laughs> no. They're right here. Cool. Sounds like there've been ongoing tech issues. <laughs> oh, all the time. All the time. It's uh, pretty challenging what we what we try to do here. Clicking join meeting. Nothing happening. Oh, sorry, Jen. My bad. Yeah. My bad. Wasn't happening because of me. Okay, here's the DM I sent to Lyle. Got the there quiz coming up on my phone. Mm. So yeah, while you were in the waiting room, Jen, I was just introducing the unit. It's uh, the Harlem Renaissance was uh, a period where culture and economics and arts all came crashing together. Um, new Negro movement is also another name for this period, and it Harlem was the focal point, but it really was happening all at the same at the same time, and all the urban um, centers were um, black people lived. So, accept cookies, logging in. Okay. Okay, I'm in. Are we all in? It just says this okay. trivia game has not started yet. Oh, Let's that means you're in. That means you're in. Okay. That means you're in. Perfect. Yeah, Jen. Jen has a secret admin page, so she can see who. Uh -huh. she, she can see how many are in, but uh, it's a, there's a lot to see on her end. So I know. I know what. Jen is the game master. She's the game master. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so we are about to begin the Harlem Renaissance trivia game. 
Um, here we go. Yep. <laughs> oh, there we go. Which of these black leaders did J. Edgar Hoover catch on mail fraud? Marcus Garvey, Father Divine, Alain Locke, or what Walter White, the NAACP guy, not the Breaking Bad guy? One vote. Two. <laughs> okay, um, here we go. Oh boy, four seconds left. <laughs> Hurry. Yeah, those will see five minutes. My my bad. I didn't uh, give enough time when I set up that set up that question. Oh, okay. It was one of those practice questions. My, <laughs> Jen, uh, I want to try your swine apple. Remember, remember those? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two. Two. Okay. Well, we have three votes. That's everybody. <laughs> Uh, for Marcus Garvey, everyone is correct. Yay. He sounds like quite the individual. Uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Are, uh, okay, so, oh, oh, what is happening? Oh, we're waiting for you. <laughs> Good grief. Um, question two, according to biography.com, which statement or statements regarding Marcus Garvey is correct? Garvey founded the ANA. Garvey was an ally of Booker T. Washington and an enemy of W.E.B. Du Bois. Garvey was an enemy of W.E.B. Du Bois and J. Edgar Hoover, or both B and C. That wasn't a hint when I was nodding. I was just encouraging Jen <laughs> for pronouncing it correctly. <laughs> I know it's Du Bois. Yeah.
hit the wrong button. Oh, oh. you. Oh, did. still thirty-nine points there. Are we at two, yeah. Jen? <laughs> uh, we're at two. Yeah. Okay, I'll answer then. Uh, okay. Here we go. Alrighty. Okay, so the correct answer was D, which was Ooh. both B and C. Hey, does that mean you got it right, Barb? I did. <laughs> oh, congratulations, yeah. So a um, couple things about Hoover. His um, campaign about Marcus Garvey kind of got kind of uh, really caught up in it, and it, it was all consuming for him. So um, it sort of tied up all his resources till, it, till he got him deported. Um, he, Garvey, and on to Garvey, he was no friend to the black intellectual elite, but he was very, very popular with common folk who, and the, those are the folk Du Bois uh, claimed Garvey was taking advantage of. And I, I guess there was a little bit of that because uh, he was uh, raising money to buy, buy boats. Uh, he wanted to, uh, he made himself the you know, like provisional king of Africa and he was trying to get a fleet uh, going and he was gonna sail over there and. Um, bring all the Africans with him, and uh, they, he raised more money uh, for the to buy the ships and the ships' cost or something like that. So, mm. yeah, sounds, like quite a, uh, sure. sounds like he was quite a charismatic individual. Yes, yes. But yes, sometimes yep. those people can take advantage. I'm just gonna peek and see who's winning. <laughs> Woo! Congratulations, Barb. Woohoo! Okay. <laughs> then I was saying at the beginning before you were before before Mike let you join us. Um, I was saying I'm, I am quite a history buff. I do love history, yeah. so this sounded really interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, looks like we got a lightning round. Oh, happening yeah. live. Oh no, no, sorry. I saw everything red on my on my phone. I got I got got nervous. Relax, relax. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ready. Uh, question three. Who wrote Harlem? Mecca of the New Negro. Father Divine, Alain Locke, Walter White, or Peter Schneck? Crap, I forget. <laughs> You're not allowed to forget. <laughs> I prepped this one a week ago. Not kidding. The name Walter White continually throws me off. <laughs> it's just too Breaking Bad. Yeah. <laughs> Did anyone get that one? Uh, we have two votes. Okay, good. Because I, I screwed that one up again, too. There's no time ran out. You won't get a third because time ran out <laughs> for me. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay. I think the so answer is Alan Locke. Alan Locke? Yes. Okay, good. That's what I tried to click. Before you hit uh, question four, can you double check the, um, that we have five minutes? Uh, I don't know how I do that. Okay. Okay. Speed round different. <laughs> um. Yeah, okay. I don't. I don't see where that. I, I can. I can do that. Just let. Just uh, what, Jen? Why don't you just uh, let them know about uh, Infographic Magazine? Just check your notes there while I log into the Crowdper and do double check the timers and all those quizzes. I think I want to make sure this is right. If you don't mind. Okay, so Mike has graciously posted a link to the Infographic Magazine, but on the Facebook group. So if you, you go can there, do that yourself if you choose to. Yeah. Yes. Question three. Okay, so question four is the lightning round. Yeah, just let me let me fix all these. Yeah. What you doing there, bud? No, question six okay. is the lightning round. Oh, oh okay. Oh, I see what you okay. Oh, wait. <laughs> Quick! <laughs> it's going 
mean, they're going very fast. <laughs> Game over. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here we are. I checked all the okay. timers. All my mistakes are in the past. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but. Oh, okay. Okay, can you go back one more because you're on question four? No, I've already closed the window. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll have to do it. Sorry. Ah, <laughs> I see what's going on. <laughs> okay, so question four. What school fired Locke for working towards equal pay for black and white faculty? A, the Tuskegee Institute. B, Morehouse College. C, Howard University, or D, Spelman College? Okay. We have two votes. And now we have three. Everyone voted for Howard University, which is- Okay, congratulations, Harvard. everyone. So just- yeah. um, give you guys Kamala Harris's uh, alma mater. Oh, yep. really? Yep. yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, the lightning round is coming up in question six, and just uh, so Barb knows. Uh, lightning round, you only have uh, 30 seconds to answer. So you have to go with your gut. You, don't, you can't go on Google. You just gotta, gotta be ready to click right away because um, the points go down really fast, but it's double points. So double okay. points, but no time. <laughs> okay. Question five. Which student of Locke's wrote the short story Spunk, which was included in Locke's anthology titled The New Negro? A, Zora Neale Hurston, B, Wallace Thurman, C, Langston Hughes, or D, Claude McKay? Oh, don't touch my face. Scratch my face, I was thinking. Can't do that. I do it all the time, but I never go anywhere, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just wash my hands all the time. Mm. We have two votes. Okay. Um, mm -mm. Zora Neale Hurston is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. This. It's a story I'm going to have to read. It sounds interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, I don't think that's on there, but uh, I'll probably find it for you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Um, so a gentleman named Wallace Thurman had a rooming house and uh, that was kind of uh, the nexus of the Harlem Renaissance. It was deep in Harlem. And Zora Hurston was one of the people that used to hang out there. So. Okay, are we ready for the lightning round? Oh my god, yes. Oh, here yes. we go. Ready, ready, ready. Here <laughs> you go. Question six. Boom. <laughs> what African American literary magazine published down? Opportunity, a journal of Negro life, fire, the messenger, or stylus? We have three votes. Two correct and one incorrect. Oh. Someone tried to Google or no, someone went with their gut. I just went with gut. Yeah. Total gut, yeah. Fire is the correct answer. Yeah. Woo. 
<laughs> Way to go, Barb. <laughs> <laughs> so um, fire is uh, kind of kind of neat, and uh, the fire press, like like it says, they went out went under when their place burned down. But uh, fire. Uh, yeah, <laughs> but they, they saved some of them from the fire, so there you could actually buy a copy if you want. Um, original copies like a hundred bucks, or you can get a, re a reprint. Uh, but someone scanned it too, so that you can actually read it. It's, it's kind of like a zine that you can you can read it. It's on the Facebook link as well. That's awesome. Uh -huh. Yeah. Did anyone see that uh, for before tonight? Or? Pardon me. Uh, did it, Did you check it out, Jen? I didn't. No, well, not yet. It, it no. is awesome though. When you see it, you'll. Yeah. It's a lot of poetry and a lot of uh, a lot of graphics and art and stuff in there, and then some stories as well. Love that. I haven't read the whole thing. I've read two short stories from there. So. Uh, okay, so we're moving on to question seven. Relax, no lightning. Whose poem, Heritage, was published in both Crisis Magazine from the NAACP and Opportunity, a journal of Negro life from the National Urban League? Was it A, Gwendolyn B. Bennett, B, Langston Hughes, C, Wallace Thurman, or D, Gene Toomer? Hint, it's not. Doing my Zoom call and tri trivia quiz. It's my husband. Oh. <laughs> That's Glenn. <laughs> he said, "Good thing he had some pants on." <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, my lovely wife's around the corner. She doesn't want to be on Zoom. <laughs> we have one boat. Ah, crap. Sorry. A beautiful poem. We have two votes. And we have three votes. The correct answer was Gwendolyn B. Bennett. Right. Can you show us this? Really, it's really quite beautiful. You found a copy? <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. Oh. Beginner <laughs> Okay. So if I'm not mistaken, Question eight will be our final question. Uh, no, there's there's two more. Oh, okay, yeah. okay, okay. Question eight. Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life is a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Claude McKay, County Cullen, Langston Hughes, or Aaron Douglas.
Two votes. It's also beautiful. And three. The correct answer is Langston Hughes. <laughs> it is a beautiful poem. They're both quite short, but very powerful. Mm -hmm. So Hughes wrote an autobiography, and uh, he was uh, quite outspoken and critical of uh, Cotton Club. That was the the, uh, the big white, uh, the big club in Harlem that was safe for white people to go to. Yeah, that was that was the, uh, the 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 safe visitor. Basically, <laughs> yes. they were they were observing the animals in the zoo, pretty much. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's exactly what he said about it. <laughs> oh, really? I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There I'll, I'll, have to find the, I'll have to find the quote. That's a, uh, wow, cool. Funny. But there was, uh, like, white patrons were part of the whole scene, but it was, it was a, yeah, it was a complicated relationship. It was necessary, but it wasn't, uh, wasn't ideal. Okay, are we ready? Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, question nine. Who played Piola uh, in the 1934 film Imitation of Life, then went on to co-found the Negro Actors Guild of America? Was it Laura Bowman, Blanche Dunn, Trixie Smith, or Freedie Washington? We have two votes. And we have three. All right. Was the correct answer. Everyone got it correct. Okay. Well, well, well. Who won? Next? Barb won. I'm in second. <laughs> well, I was last. Here I am, yeah. But everybody, everybody learned something. Very good. Okay. Okay. Well, um, got five minutes left. Can I just ask a question? Something I was thinking about this morning. Um, what would uh, how would you? like it if, if instead of um, leaving it wide open to Google, if I just gave you a link to uh, a document where you can look for the answers. Would that be less fun, more fun, worth a try, not worth a try? I don't know. The Google sort of helps me most of the time. Yeah. Okay. And it's a random shot sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> making something altogether different, which is part of the fun. Mm -hmm. But then when you find a site that gives you the answer, you can bookmark it and extrapolate on that and learn more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, when I'm prepping the quizzes, I kind of uh, do a Google search for based on things I hope will come up from what I learned in the Yale course. And then I go down a Google rabbit hole and come up with all these, all these things. Uh, mm -hmm. But my Google search results might be different than your guys, you know, so mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So no, I mean, it's a fair question. Um, Okay. Well, um, seems to work for a while, so we'll probably keep it that way. Since he's the only one Googling, I'm not going <laughs> to well, impose I, yeah, anything I on him, but I'm, I do my Googling. Most of the time it's a wild guess anyway. Yeah, exactly. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's go with that then. Okay. Well, happy uh, Indigenous Veterans Day to everybody and uh, rest in peace, uh, Alex and uh, Howie Meeker and President 
Donald Trump. <laughs> <laughs> rest in peace as well, isn't that? Golf and peace, yeah. Go golf and peace. Go golf and peace. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So long, everyone. So long. Thank you. You're welcome. Catch you next time. <laughs>